Hi, this is Megan, and I read John Paul's letter to the artist. So, the main um, understanding and insight I gathered from this reading is the importance of the alliance between art and the gospel. John Paul initially um, starts out by talking about God as the original creator and what that means for us, which to me, I immediately thought of um, Steve Turner's book Imagine as he also highlights this. I think they both um, want to emphasize that because we are made in the image of God and that God is the ultimate creator, that we have this inherent capability to create and therefore we should use these abilities um, and be aware of our gifts so that we can A, reveal the beauty of Christ that is bestowed to us for the service of humanity, but to also glorify God. John Paul also mentions that when we partake in this creativity that um, it can express a glimmer of splendor that comes from the Spirit. John Paul um, next goes on to talk about art and alliance of the church throughout history. So there's a quote on page three that I thought was a good summary of um, the importance of art history. Quote, the history of art, therefore, is not only a story of works produced, but also a story of men and women. Works of art speak of their authors, they enable us to know their inner life, and they reveal the original contribution which artists offer to the history of culture. So from there, John Paul goes on to describe the fuse of faith and art throughout history. So first it kind of talks, he starts to talk about um, um, symbolism and the importance of those, of that, and the iconoclast crisis. And then transitioning into, you know, the architecture of these beautiful grand cathedrals during the Renaissance and Middle Ages. Um, but then I thought which was important is he talks about um, the more shift to um, secular art, but how even through this shift of not the fuse of faith and artistry that there still points out... Um, a bridge to religious ties, and I think he directly talks about this on page 9. True art has a close affinity with the world of faith, so that even in situations where culture and the church are far apart, art remains a kind of bridge to religious experience. Later he says, even when they, I'm assuming he's talking about um, non-believing artists, explore the darkest depths of the soul or the most unsettling aspects of evil, artists give voice in a way to universal desire for exemption. Redemption. So why I found this interesting is because even when something is not per se Christian or beautiful, it still holds biblical or religious ties because it points out, um, in this case, our need and desire for redemption. My question comes from the bottom of page 9, where it highlights um, the council the Council of the Fathers, or the Second Vatican Council. They express the need for beauty, especially for Christian artists, to portray this beauty and how, um, if they are to reflect the beauty of God, that they are considered having a noble ministry. So my question from this is, if we pretend and submerge into the belief that everything needs to be beautiful, do we lose our sight that this world is not our home? For me, I think obviously beautiful um, art is good and can um, bring us hope and light, but I also think there's an importance in um, showing imperfections and that this world is not our final home. And I think Steve Turner would agree with this as he says, um, is it unchristian to create art assuming the world is unblemished? And he believes, I think it would be unchristian. So for me, um, my confusion or my question is, is like Christian artists today, are we solely supposed to create art that is beautiful and Christian and leave, um, you know, the evil or temptations? Are we supposed to leave that for non-Christian or non-believing artists?